everybody! I hope you're here to do some drawing. If you're just here for the dad jokes, I'm sorry, but there's only one per show. Uh, sometimes I try and throw in a few more, but I'm just not that creative. Maybe if you have some good ones yourselves, you can throw them in the chat. Anyway, this is an all-ages drawing show. Bring the family, bring the kids. We're going to do 10 minutes of drawing together at the beginning of the show where we just draw along step by step, and that's a simple thing to do. And I think you'll enjoy this one because we have a little bit of a Valentine's theme for today. And a happy belated Valentine's Day to all of you out there. Um, then we're going to follow up today with one of my favorite books. Sometimes I like to share with you one of the cool books I have on that shelf behind me. You can see that it's just jam-packed with cool books. And sometimes I take one off the shelf and I show it to you in the hopes that it'll inspire you and maybe make you interested in going out and grabbing it or just checking it out, um, you know, with a friend who is going to buy it for you because that's what friends are for. And then we're going to finish with an animal and activity where you tell me something to draw, an animal, and then you have to tell me what that animal is doing. Something funny, unexpected, weird, crazy, and I'll go ahead and draw that. And that closes out the show. I hope you're all doing well out there, staying safe and sound. It's pretty cold over there in Texas. I know some stuff is rough there. We have somebody watching from Texas. Hi, Clever. Um, anybody, anyway, um, one of the things that's been slacking, I think, around most households these days is cleaning because we're just, you know, we're stuck at home and we just can't be bothered. Um, I've been trying to keep on top of it. But I did actually recently just throw away my vacuum cleaner because it seemed like it was just collecting dust. <laughs> okay, why don't we do some drawing? Now, go ahead and grab yourselves a pencil, a pen, or a marker, or a crayon, or uh, maybe just a long uh, stick that you found out in the driveway, um, or maybe just broken off of an elm tree. And you can dip that in some mustard, ketchup, and a little bit of curry to add that spice that you need for your drawings and then draw all over your parents' favorite carpet, okay? Now, let's say hi to some folks in the chat. We have Steve and Christine and RB and Flynn and Sherry and Andre and Sam and uh, Clever, who I mentioned, and our, uh, Sherry and uh, gosh, am I, and Rasta and Monica and Mercurio, all kinds of nice folks here hanging out for the draw along today. Well, let's not waste any more time because we're gonna get started with our drawing today. I mentioned this is a Valentine's Day drawing. What I mean by that is we're gonna draw some hearts and out of those hearts, we're gonna make a very nice drawing, okay? Now, sometimes people struggle with hearts and they go, well, how do I make the heart look good? And they kind of draw it and then draw it again and draw it again. So I'll show you an easy way to draw a heart today and hopefully that'll help you out. To do these drawings, you have to be able to do three simple things, a straight line, a zigzag, or a curvilinear line, okay? Could be an S curve, could be a C curve, Okay, now to draw these hearts today, we are going to use some curvilinear lines. We're going to get started like this. We're just going to make a C curve like that. I'll zoom in so you can really see what I'm doing here. So one, and then we'll just repeat that. Okay, just repeat it like this. Okay, it doesn't matter if they're not totally identical. All right, don't worry about that. Now that's the top of our heart. And we're going, to take, we're going to take our little center point here. We're going to move downwards, okay? Now, how far down, you might ask? Well, I want you to think about the distance from here to here, okay? So basically, from where the curve starts to where the curve ends. So one of those. And think about taking that distance, one, and a two. So you're doubling it, one, two, something like that. And just make a little dot for yourself. It's a nice little thing to aim for. And then all you do is you just curve on down to meet that point. See that? You can also curve up if you like. Either way, doesn't matter to me, same result. And there you have a nice heart because we found that center point. It was easy to make that happen. Now we're going to draw a heart that's upside down, okay? We're going to start here, all right? So I'm coming up a little ways, not quite to halfway, Right, not quite halfway between here and here, maybe about a third, somewhere around that vicinity, okay? And I'm gonna draw a smaller heart and it's gonna be upside down. So this time, instead of going up with my curve, I'm gonna go down like that and do it again. Okay, see that, one and two. And then I'm just gonna curve it up and over to meet here. Check it out, go up and over just to that point and up and over just to that point, all right? So now, actually that one's a little wonky. I'll try and push that out a bit more. There we go. 
So now we've got one heart here and one heart here. Heart inside a heart. This one's upside down. But now we're going to do another one right side up. This one's going to go up like this and down. Okay, so I'm going to go up and over, down and over. The smaller you get with the hearts, the easier it is to just draw them in one shot or maybe two. Okay, so we have now drawn three hearts, three hearts. Now coming off of the curve of this heart here, okay, coming off this curve, I'm pretending that curve just keeps on going and it's going to round its way over the top and connect on this side. Now, if the thought of drawing one big curve like that is intimidating, well, again, here's what you can do. You can make yourself a little target. So I'm going to draw a little dot right there in the center. Okay, and then I know that I'm going to try and hit that. Okay, or I could start from the dot and curve on down. Doesn't matter. Come down and just connect like that. Down and just connect like that. See? So that way I don't feel the pressure to have to go all the way over in one shot. And that can make it a lot easier. All right, now I'm looking at the top of this curve here, right at the center. And I'm going to just move my way up to about here. Okay, ta-da. And here's the center of our entire shape. And I'm just going to aim for that, like that. Same on this side, I'm coming up to about here and then I'm gonna aim back this way. Excellent, so we've made a V, right? Like a V. And again, we're following this curve and I'm just gonna connect, watch. I'm gonna come up, curving along to connect and up, curving along to connect. See that? Lovely. Alrighty, now we're gonna draw a U, a little U shape. So we're gonna drop down here and back up. Down we go, and back up, followed by a little line right there. Aha! All right, now I want you to look at this intersection right here. I'm gonna drop a little bit beneath it and come out here to the side, and I'm basically lining up with the outside of this, this second heart we drew inside, the upside down one, right about here, and I'm gonna go up and over like that. Same on this side, up and over. Adorable. Happy little dog face. See this? And now for another upside down heart. I'm going to put this one inside the ear. Okay, so it's coming off here, following along, and then up and over and back. Following along and up and over and right back. See how nicely that fits right inside there? One, two, three, four, five hearts we've drawn. Five hearts. And guess what, gang? We're almost done. Now again, I'm just gonna follow this curve and I'm gonna come down and taper towards the center. Make myself a little mark to aim for. See that little dot there? That always helps. I can just sort of aim for that and say, here we go, bam. And down on this side, here we go, and bam. Let those connect, okay? And then I'm going to look at this line that I have and pretend that it just keeps on going a little ways. Same with this one. Just let it keep on going a little ways. Okay? So we crisscross like that. All righty. Make it a little longer. I'm sorry. It should be just a little longer. Okay. That looks about right to me. Okay. Now, again, I'm following this energy, this flow of this line. I'm coming down. And I'm just going to come down and then curve slightly to meet that. And here again, down and slightly curving in to meet that. See? Look at this nice silhouette we've got, right? It's really fluid. That's what you're aiming for. And guess what? Paw number one is just a little C-curve and a straight line. Paw number two, same thing in the opposite direction, right? And last but not least, we just throw a tail out here. We're going to take it from right here. We're going to go out and over. So watch this, out and over like that. There's a little line. And now I'm going to do these lines that are going to curve, okay? Very shallow curves. They're going to get slightly longer as I get back towards the body. I'm going to start like this, slightly longer and slightly longer, 
See, and they just keep on angling back. And there you have the tail of the dog. Want to make it wag? Throw in some action lines like that. That's fun. Want to ground your dog? Put a couple of lines right there, okay? Grounded, just like that. So there's our little Valentine's Day themed drawing for today. Let's slide that on over here. Woof, woof. Happy dog, happy dog. Um, now, I want to know how your drawings went. If you're following along, let me know in the chat if uh, that was a good one for you. And remember that you can always watch these back, okay? These are uh, all recorded and archived on YouTube. Just search for Draw Along with Kyle and um, you'll find it, okay? So now we're gonna move on to favorite books. And today I have one that's really quite cool. And uh, it's different than the average. So can't wait to show it to you. Alrighty, so here we go. Now, this is Swan Lake, okay, by Ping Zhu, Z-H-U, Swan Lake by Ping Zhu. And you know, you pick up the book, you say, oh, it looks like a regular old book to me, okay? But it is not. For when you open it, look what happens here. It opens and whoop, the book comes right out of the cover. And what you're left with is a cool accordion fold. And I'm gonna start on this side, okay? And what we are seeing is, as I open it, the backstage action, the backstage action. This is what's happening Swan Lake behind the curtain, okay? Makeup is being put on, dancers are warming up, right? And then as we move along, look at this. And it just keeps on going like this, all the way across. And on the other side, You get to see the lobby of the theater, and then you get to see everybody in the audience, which includes cows and Batman and all kinds of cool characters to try and find in there. Okay, an elephant. I guess elephants like the theater. And it just keeps on going until you get to see what's on the stage. You get to see the dancers doing their fantastic job. You get to see both sides of the theater, okay? It is just so nice. And the color palette is so lovely. It's just blue, orange, and uh, yellow. That's pretty much it. Okay, now they throw in a, the odd pink here or there, but that's pretty much it. Um, and it's just a really beautifully done illustrated book, no words, uh, very special piece. And um, unlike anything that I've ever seen before, I love it. Uh, go check it out, it's still available. You can still get this. Maybe if you have a friend in your life who loves dancing, who loves ballet, and who loves the theater, this would be just a perfect little unexpected present for them, just to show them that you care. Uh, and that is Swan Lake by Ping Zhu. Wonderful. And there it is for you. So you can see it. Don't forget it. Um, I remember buying that for my kids when they were both doing ballet and they were uh, very tiny. They were three and five years old and both doing ballet. And that was super cute, adorable stuff. Oh, hey, do you hear that? That is an alarm. It means something very special. Um, and those of you who've watched the show before know what it's time for. Appreciation Station. Today, Monica, we are appreciating you, Monica. And I want to tell a quick story. When I was working as a sheriff in that tiny town in Norway, you remember, um, and those nasty little elves were stealing everybody's socks. Well, it was you, with your very keen sense of smell, who was able to sniff out the one part of town where it stunk the most like feet. Do you remember that? And it was an abandoned mill. And we walked inside the mill, and there, in fact, was this enormous pile of stolen socks. We were able to arrest those thieving elves and also get the socks back to everybody so their feet were no longer cold. 
So thanks for your help with that. That was a pretty cool adventure. Um, we eventually let those elves go and they learned their lesson. But uh, anyway, thank you for that. All right, now it is time for the animal and activity game. Now this is where you're gonna recommend to me in the chat a cool animal doing something cool, funny, unexpected, weird, and I will draw it for you. We've had many funny and wonderful drawings in the past. It's always a challenge for me to try and get them done. Um, sometimes I really have to try and think about what the animal looks like, and that's a challenge to begin with. Uh, so we'll see what happens, but you always come up with very creative ones. So what I need is my nice light blue color to sketch with. And there it is, and I'm ready to go. And I will look for your suggestions in the chat. An animal doing something funny, something weird, something unexpected, and then away we go. So let's see what you can come up with. Alrighty, we have a Texan ice skating. Well, a Texan what? A Texan what, Christine? A chupacabra dancing. If I knew what a chupacabra was, is that a monster? I think it's a monster, right? Like a Mexican folk tale. Um, what else do we have? A bat with night vision goggles flying around safely. That's a fun one. I like that. An armadillo ice skating. An armadillo. Yeah. How do you draw armadillos? <laughs> Trying to picture in my head. I know they've got that armored back. Um, long tail. A pangolin, which is a little armadillo. Doing chin-ups. Doing chin-ups. Do armadillos need to work out? Interesting. Uh, so far, oh, we have a hippo doing artistic swimming and a buffalo baking pizza in a brick oven. I don't think I've ever drawn a buffalo. An octopus on a climbing frame. Um, gosh, I don't think I've ever drawn a buffalo. Let's try that. A buffalo baking pizza in a brick oven. All right, this is this is very challenging for me, so you'll forgive me if it doesn't look like a buffalo. So I'm gonna try though. Buffalo. Kind of look like that, don't they? That big mop of hair on top. And then horns out to the side, right? Isn't that kind of buffalo-ish right there? More or less, where are their ears? Buffalo, can you even see their ears or is it all just kind of covered with hair on the top? I'm trying to picture in my head a buffalo. I might be getting it confused with a yak or something. Well, you know what? If it winds up looking like a yak, whatever. Y'all will forgive me. No big deal. All right, so this buffalo is working at the pizza shop. And he's loading in that pizza. on one of those um, sticks they use with the brick. Our family had the very good fortune to spend uh, a couple weeks in Florence, Italy about three years ago. And uh, right down the street from our the place we stayed was a very nice pizzeria. Where, of course, they had the uh, the brick oven, you know. We had to get that pizza a few times. Of course, I can't really eat pizza because I can't eat cheese, but... But... It was it smelled good, and my the rest of my family enjoyed it, so, you know. Good for them. All right, here we go. It's There's our brick, brick oven there. Let's actually have him stepping. You know what? I kind of want to have, whoops, sorry. I'm doing the wrong bits here. I kind of want to have this leg go back like for stability. And this one over here. So it's like, like that.
I don't think this really looks like a buffalo, but pff, whatever. It's fun. We know it's some kind of animal. There we go. All right, and then we gotta have some bricks here, right? Little bricky details. Just to suggest the texture of that wall, right? That's that's all you need. A little suggestion. That's all you need sometimes. And in we go towards the fire. And we can then get the shadow here. Shadow, shadow, shadow. And actually this perspective would be more like that, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Feeling like that's okay. All right, now we're gonna move on to our line work. So we'll knock this back so it's more faint. Grab a darker color. And let's just see what happens here. Okay. Remember, the sketch is just a sketch. If you gotta move stuff around, move it. It's there to help you kind of understand where stuff goes, but not in such a way that you feel like you're locked in. It's there to help you get a sense of the general um, proportion of things, the scale, you know what I mean? So don't feel like, gosh, I I drew it this way in the sketch. Should I stick with it? No, not if it's not right, you know. Don't feel like you gotta do that. Okay. He's got his little pizza shirt on. Oops, there we go. And this arm is coming up under our. What is this? I wonder what is this thing called? Do you all know? Is it like a. Do they call it a shovel? The thing that you load the pizza onto? to get it into the oven. No idea what that's called. Maybe one of you can ask Professor Google what that's called. Get an answer. Okay. There we go. And on down to the floor. Bit of texture. Right. So we know that this is brick. You can even just draw like a few random bricks here and there, that's always a nice touch. And uh, there you go, I think that's pretty much it. We just have to throw the legs in there. And... I think we got it, folks. Maybe you want to show that there's some like heat coming out of there. I don't know. It's up to you. Give him a little collar for his shirt. All right? Maybe some pockets. Why not? And there you go. It's a sort of a buffalo yak thing loading pizza into a brick oven. I think that's gonna have to do it for now, folks. 
Um, well, hey, as usual, fun suggestions that you had, and I appreciate you hanging out with me and doing a little bit of drawing, looking at one of my favorite books, and then having some fun with an animal and activity drawing as well. So give that little uh, Valentine's heart dog a try. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Remember to be kind, and I'm going to say ciao for now. Bye. Thank you.